Hi there, welcome again to another online sociology lesson. We are looking today at the education policies from the Labour Party in 1997 onwards to kind of 2010. Now, the Labour Party came into power after the Conservatives were in power for about 18 years. And they came into power with a man called Tony Blair, who made education one of the kind of central pillars of his policy for government. And so the Labour Party did make quite a few changes to education um, and the sort of education system that we know in the UK today. And we're going to have a quick look at what their policies were and how they have impacted on the UK education system. So to start off, um, political slogans. These are often three word slogans that politicians use to get their message across kind of during campaigns or even right now actually during the the current uh, coronavirus pandemic we've had not a three word slogan but that three part slogan of you know stay at home protect the nhs and save lives that's kind of a three part slogan three word slogans are really really popular with politicians um, in the campaign for the vote leave um, in the EU referendum, the slogan was take back control. Very, very clear three word political slogan for his election in 2019. Boris Johnson used the slogan get Brexit done. Um, Barack Obama took a leaf out of Bob the Builder's political handbook and used the slogan. Yes, we can in 2008. Um, and one of the more famous slogans we've got at the moment is Donald Trump's Make America Great Again, which I'm not sure he realises isn't actually three words long. Um, when they came to power in 1997, Tony Blair said that the political slogan, the kind of the striving message of his campaign was three words long. Education, education, education. And so that really summarises for us just how important education was for the Labour Party in 1997. They felt like a lot of changes had to come around because the UK was falling down those international league tables rather than rising up it. It's also worth mentioning that Tony Blair's government in 1907 was really, really popular. Okay, They won a landslide majority in the polls. More people voted for the Labour Party than had done really nearly ever. Um, and even the Sun newspaper, who are a hugely kind of Tory focused paper, historically right wing, they backed Blair and the left wing Labour Party. And that was a massive decision. And they are one of the most read papers in the country. And what they say on the front of their paper gets read by millions of people. And they back Tony Blair. So they were a very, very popular party. And Blair was a very popular prime minister when he got elected. So a lot of his policies, he was able to action them and implement them because he had such a large majority in Parliament. So without further ado, let's have a look at Labour's four key education policies. These are not the only ones, but these are the ones we're going to look at today um, in a kind of sociological understanding. And whereas before in 1988, we used the acronym SHOP to describe the marketization and kind of uh, competition between schools, this is much more about children being safe in education and education being in the safe hands of the Labour Party. What the Labour Party wanted to do is get every child, and this is from preschool years all the way up to 18, to feel like they were safe in school and in education. And they did this through a number of key policies. Firstly, we have what were called sure start schools. Sure start schools were schools that were placed in some of the most disadvantaged, disadvantaged low income areas. And what they did is tried to raise the educational achievement of children from low income families. So they were government funded 
projects in disadvantaged areas to really boost the reading and the writing and the skills of low income young children. Okay, so they were massively, massively rolled out across the UK and they were really heavily funded. And the whole idea was to get children who otherwise might not have a chance to go to a kind of high performing school, have a chance to get a sure start in life um, compared to obviously their more advantaged peers. The A in safe um, refers to academies. Okay, so there was a there was another wave of academies that were set up. Remember, academies are schools that are funded by the local government, but also funded partly by local businesses. And these were replacing failing state schools. So it was about getting a higher um, educational uh, output, getting a higher value of education, higher performing schools in the area through academies. The F of SAFE stands for free childcare. The Labour Party made it their policy that every single preschool child would get a certain number of hours of childcare for free, which meant that they could get more women back into the workplace. So rather than having to stay at home with children, women or their male partners, if that's what they chose to do, could send their preschool child to a childcare facility for free because it was paid for by the government, paid for by taxes. So therefore they could get more women into work and they have a higher gender equality in the workplace, but also more people in work and therefore a better economy, essentially. The E in SAFE stands for the Educational Maintenance Allowance or EMAs for short. Now, what these did, and my brother actually got an EMA when he was in sixth form, these were given to children aged 16 to 19. So they're children in A-level colleges or sixth forms from low-income families. And you were paid a weekly allowance to attend school. You were literally paid to go to school. So what this was trying to do is discourage children from low-income families from leaving school at 16 and going to get a job. And you know from looking at um, various studies like um, Hall, uh, Housey and, and Ridge um, that children from low income families on average leave school at 16 more than those from high income families because they are going in search of work and income. Now, EMAs were paying children to go to school, to go to college and to get A-levels. And it was all dependent on your level of income. So the maximum weekly payment was 30 pounds and the minimum was 10 pounds. And there was kind of three stages, so 10, 20 and 30 pounds. And when he was at school, when he was in sixth form, my brother got 30 quid a week just for going to school. And when I got into sixth form, they'd scrap the policy and I got nothing. Um, so it, it really annoyed me, I was, I was livid. He paid for his driving lessons on his EMAs alone. But EMAs are a, a, a way of getting low income teenagers to stay in education longer and to feel safe in education. OK, so you've got Sure Start, Academies, Free Childcare and EMAs. And you can see just in the free childcare and to the EMAs, the range of policies from preschool to post school covering all age groups. Now, that's the four policies, and I want you to make notes on those and include the acronym SAFE, and if you want to put the icons on as well, you can. They are the four policies that we're looking at. Let's have a look at the, the purposes. They're quite obvious, the purposes. Obviously, to raise the chances for low-income children, um, children in low-income families, to keep older children in low-income families in education for longer, and to get more women back into the workforce. They're the kind of three main policies um, purposes of these policies. Now, we can say that a lot of these policy, policies would be welcomed by Marxists and feminists who would, who would value the kind of increased emphasis on women and people from the working class. Um, a lot of these policies were successful at the time, but not all of them have lasted. OK, so EMAs no longer exist. You don't get paid anymore to go to school, unfortunately. Um, sure Start schools are closing because the government now are not funding them as much as the Labour Party did when they were in power. So a lot of these policies are no longer in place. So we can't really measure their success currently, 
but they were quite successful in the time that they were in. But they haven't really changed education as much as the 1988 Reform Act did, because we still see from the Reform Act, we still see um, Her Majesty's Inspectors, Open Days, Parentocracy. We still see all of that school league tables, you know, the shop acronym. We see all of that still in our schools we don't see many of the policies from 1997. So if you were to evaluate these policies, you would say that yes, they were all good and well at the time, but the most influential policies for education in the UK in the last 30 to 40 years has been the 1988 Education Reform Act. So that is the number one influential policy. Okay, that's the one above all of them. That being said, it's well worth knowing what Labour did, and so please use the acronym SAFE in your work and make some notes about their policies and the purposes of them. Thanks very much.